So today I wanted to cover light mapping in Unity. I found this really cool asset on Unity's asset store. This is a great way for all of you to follow along by using this free asset that is provided by Unity. If you read the reviews, there's a bunch of people saying their projects, um, well, quote, broke my project. So this is a good reminder that um, if you're gonna use this asset, make sure it's in a new project. Um, let's get started. I am using Unity version six. You can see the exact version up here where my mouse cursor is. Here I selected Universal 3D Core. I'm gonna turn off Connect to Unity Cloud. I don't need that. I'm gonna call this project Light Map YouTube Tutorial. It's gonna go in my GitHub folder. So I wanna make sure we're all using the same layout. Where this little button is on the top right corner, Layout, Reset All Layouts. I've already added this asset into my asset list. You go to Windows, Package Manager. I'm gonna to go to My Assets, type in Interior, and it's the first one. I'm gonna import this to my project. Okay, there's one other thing that I want you to import because I know I'll be using it in this tutorial, and that is Pro Builder. So click on Unity Registry and type in Pro Builder, install it. So one thing to note about this Unity asset, um, it's a great model, but I do think like, for example, they could have done a better job with setting up the, the lighting scene. Like if I, this is the sample scene that it comes with, but it, as you notice, the lighting looks super weird. But if I go into the prefab scene, the lighting looks better. I think there's a better way to really show them off and showing off these assets. Because as you can see, these are really um, nice, simple assets. But I do think where um, the presentation of these assets falls short is on the lighting and it's a relatively easy fix. For everyone following along, a good place to start, and this is where I'm starting, is go into the scenes folder and open up the prefab scene. Um, it's the one that I've selected, it's on the left side. And then you'll see all of these um, modular assets. And then you'll here you can see the materials that are being used. And here I'm just going to build out my room using these modular pieces. Uh, Control D is to dupe. I'm just gonna dupe a few pieces. Neat trick in Unity, if you wanna snap pieces together perfectly, is with the model you're selected, where you wanna snap it, hold V, and then where that where you want the pivot, wherever your cursor goes, the pivot moves with it. And here, I like the pivot to be right here. And with V still selected, I'm gonna left click on my mouse and drag it into the area that I want to snap it to. And now I'm just gonna duplicate some assets and bring them in. On your new room, avoid using this piece over here. Um, I did some tests uh, in preparation for this tutorial, and this one is just not modeled in a way where you'll just run into way too many issues. E to rotate, hold control while you're rotating to snap it. I'm gonna keep this outer edge open. I know that a lot of these cozy games that have these rooms tend to do that, and it's a nice, way to really show the interior without blocking the view of the player. I think this is a good place to start saving the prefab. Actually, let me, it just feels like this table was missing something. So I think now it's time to save our prefab. On an empty area in your hierarchy, right click, create empty. Let's call this room block out a one. And then I just, I like to put prefab at the end. I'm going to select the room prefab group that I created on the transform. Go to right click, reset. It snaps it into the world center. I'm going to come back to my room stuff back in there. I'm just going to manually move it to roughly where the center is. So that's our room. I've saved it as a prefab. So this will be the scene that I use to bake the light maps. And with that in mind, I only want the prefab I just created in here, plus the directional light. Okay. And because I'm baking a light map and the light map will have ambient occlusion in it, I want to turn off this screen space ambient occlusion settings folder. So PC renderer screen space ambient occlusion right here. Watch what happens when I uncheck it on, off, on, off. It does a lot for the visuals open up the lighting tab window rendering lighting and dock it right next to your inspector by left clicking the tab of the lighting and dragging it in i like to first bake the light map and make sure there's no lighting in the scene so that when i light it 
I have full control over the look. So a good test is first generate a light map with whatever is going on. There's clearly light in here. So I come in, turn off the directional light, turn it lighting. I'm still getting light detail here. That tells me that the skybox is casting light and I want to have full control. Control. So I'm going to turn this off by selecting none. I don't think this fully turns it off, but let me just double check here. Environment reflection source or environment lighting color and then set the color to black. Generate setting it to black. Generate. Now there's no skybox and there's no ambient color being reflected in basically an ambient lighting. It's all off. Now I'm going to go back to my directional light and turn it on. It said the mode is set to real time. I'm going to set it to baked and go find it. Where is it at? So it's set to bake. I'm going to rotate it where I think it gives me a good light. Now I'm going to let's do a few things here. Go into your scene tab in your lightings tab and the lighting setting asset. Just create a new one. I'm just going to use a default value with a name. The shadow mask, I'm going to set it to baked in direct. For the light mapper, I'm going to use the GPU. These settings look fine. Let's just see what we get. Nice. Purely black, which is good. Um, before I can get any light map generated on my assets, I need to make sure that I set it to static. If you're re clicking render and nothing's, you're not seeing any light information, make sure you come here, click on static of your full prefab, and make sure you enable this for all of the children of the prefab. Now, when I hit generate lighting, it should give me something. Is that already, that lighting already looks so much better than what we had prior. First thing I want to add is I want to add a ceiling and I want to add the walls. These things that I'm adding are just for generating the light map. And I'm going to call these light blockers group. I'm going to clear the light data real quick just so I can more easily see what's going on. I want the light to only go through this window. Hide this class over here. You can turn this on after you're done. These materials can be finicky just to make sure the light goes through the class. I'm going to turn off this material. And then another thing that I want to do is just to ensure I don't have anything weird happen with my lights uh, leaking through uh, different meshes. Right now, the render face is set to front. I want to set every material to uh, both just to make sure it's easier. It's less work for me to make sure that I don't have any light leaks this way. Now let's come back in here. This new lighting, I'm going to bake. Now I just want to finesse bounce lighting in the room. I want to make sure that the end result looks like what a traditional, like a natural light that comes in and bounces around look like. Right now it's too dark. There's not enough bounces. So we get to play around with this lighting tab. In direct intensity, I'm going to bump this up. Let's just try some like five. I'm going to grab my light blockers and right here where the materials are, right now it's using wood planks. I'm going to select this cream material, drag and drop. That looks a little bit better. Let me look at our light. Directional light looks fine. Let's improve, increase intensity to two. And I'm rendering now. So if you want to check the resolution light map is getting, you go to this debug menu over here. You click on the drop down arrow. Under a big global illumination, you'll see big light map. Click on that. Then these squares represent texel density, um, basically how many pixels in the textures you're getting. The resolution. If you want to unify it, you can come into select the piece that is bigger than the one right next to it. With that, you go into the inspector. With that piece selected, you can in the scale in light map, you can increase that and see until it's a little bit closer to the piece right next to it. I'm going to get out of the debug mode. So one thing you notice, or you will notice, um, when baking light maps is with modular pieces, you're going to have issues where you're going to see seams where the modular piece stops and the next one begins like right here you'll see these seams over here hopefully you can see this on your screen where if i unselect it there's these seams and you're going to get this anywhere where the modular piece is placed i'm going to show you how to clean that up you can really notice it here look look how bad that looks i'm going to put a light for this light lamp i'm going to come here create a spotlight probably the spotlight needs to be set to not real time baked all right, so let's go ahead and fix this wall thing that's happening, these seams. To show you what I'm going to be doing is, first I'm going to isolate this um, wall by holding Shift and then pressing H. And I'm going to prepare this to be merged with the other wall. But before I can do that, I need to delete the face. Let me bring up Pro Builder. With the wall selected, I'm going to right click. Um, where it says Mesh Filter, you can go to Pro Builderize and confirm. Now, if I come here, this button right here, and this, if I click on it, it exposed a bunch of these menus, vertice selection, edge selection, face selection. So now with face selection, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do is I want to delete these faces wherever I want to merge the vertices. I need to first make sure that there aren't faces inside of that mesh so that otherwise I won't be able to merge cleanly. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that for 
the walls, the baseboard, and the floor. Let's um, do this in a very easy to, um, easy to manage way. Right click on an empty area, create an empty group, call this walls, clean up, okay? Reset the transform, right click on the transform and reset. I'm gonna duplicate this, call this baseboard, baseboard cleanup, okay? Duplicate, floor, cleanup. So now, in order for me to move the meshes that I'm going to modify into those groups, I need to first unpack this prefab, otherwise it won't let me. So like, if you came in this prefab right here, click on the floor, and then try to move this into the floor cleanup group, it'll give you this pop-up and it's just super confusing. So let's just not deal with that. Right-click on the, the parent of that prefab, and under prefab, go to unpack, click on it. Now you can move all your floors out of there. Floor cleanup, just to make sure I got all the floors selected. Okay, walls, let's select all the walls. Move the walls into the walls cleanup group. Baseboards. This artist is calling them skirting. So in the search menu, I'm just typing in skirting to select all of the skirting. But I'm pretty sure it's called baseboards. And I don't know why this the door frame is merged into the baseboard. And I think this baseboard, I need to unpack this because I was not expecting to have to move something out of the actual door prop. So same thing, this one give me a pop-up. So I'm gonna unpack this so that I can get access to that. So skirt, something else is giving me issues. Okay, it looks like all the walls need to be unpacked. Okay, select all your, in your walls cleanup folder, select all the parents all together at the same time. Right click, unpack all of them at the same time. Now I can grab all of the baseboards and move them out. So let's go ahead and test this out and make sure we have everything. Floors, turn them off. Okay, that's all the floors. Baseboards, turn them off. That's all the baseboards. Walls, turn them off. That's all the walls. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with cleanup. I'm going to show you one and then I'm not sure if I'm going to fast forward it because once you do one, you've kind of figured out how to do all of them. Let's select all the floors by click and dragging, right click, mesh filter, pro builderize, confirm. Now they're all pro builder. If you don't do this, you can't actually use the pro builder tool. So you have to, if you see this pro builder mesh filter, that's when you know you can actually modify them. In this case, I want to make sure that click on this pen tool like before, select the faces. I want to make sure that I don't delete the outer wall of the floor because I want that to be uh, visible to the viewer. So in this case, I'm going to select this piece. I'm going to isolate it with shift H, hold shift and then press H on your keyboard. I'm going to delete the interior walls here. I selected them. So let's overview this real quick. You should see, you're not seeing the tool right now, but you first have to first select the floor, the mesh that's pro builderized, and then you'll see this orange grid looking thing. You click on that, and then you click on the face selection. From here, you click, click. Um, if you shift click, you can select multiple faces, and then with the faces you want to delete selected, right click, delete faces or backspace based on this thing. So now those faces are deleted. All right, let's move on to the next floor. And then, so this one, I want to delete. This is the interior one is right here. Delete faces. Next one, let's move on. This one, it's these faces. Okay, so all the faces have been adjusted. Now I want to exit the Pro Builder tool just to more easily select all of them. So the way I do that is by clicking something that is not pro builderized. So in this case, if I click on the floor cleanup group, that one doesn't have a pro, a pro builder, um, pro builder mesh filter. When I do that, it exits the tool. And now I have Unity's um, normal navigation is now I want to combine these objects together. Do that. Left click and drag, select them all, or you can just come here and shift select, right click, and then under Pro Builder Mesh, you, you click on Merge Objects. It looks a little scary right now, but if you clear the Generate Lighting Big Data, because um, you'll be able to see the mesh underneath. So this is our new mesh. But another thing that we need to do, I'm select the wireframe, 
now, when I go back to my Pro Builder tool, by pressing this orange grid thing, selecting vert in this case, if I select a vert and I move it, notice that it's not merged. So that's the next thing. And to save you some time, before you run the merge or weld operation in here, make sure that you exit this tool. There's a button here that needs to be turned on. Basically, I want to turn this on to always select everything within the selection that I create. If this is not on and you click and drag this, it only selects one vert. But I want it to select all, there's four overlapping verts here. If you have an issue welding your points, make sure select hidden is on. I'm going to come here, click and drag with the vertices activated, vert selection activated, select all the verts, right click, weld vertices, confirm. To double check that that actually worked, come here, click on one vert, don't, don't click and drag and move it up. And the whole thing should move up. If it does not do that, make sure you come back here and you check this option box. So now the floor is no longer going to have any issues. Now we're going to move on to the next. Baseboards it is. Select all of them. Right click. Mesh filter. Pro builderize. Confirm. Now I can come here and go to face and start cleaning it up. Generally speaking, in 3D modeling, when you merge two pieces together, you don't want to face inside of the mesh. This causes a lot of problems. Right click. Delete. Move on to the next piece. The next piece is this. Shift click. You get two selections. Right click. Delete faces. All right, next piece. All right, that's all the baseboards. I'm going to select all the baseboards. Right click, um, Pro Builder Mesh, Merge Objects. Okay, hit the orange grid looking thing. Select the verts. Make sure your select hidden is on. Click and drag all the verts. Right click, all the vertices. Confirm. Click on one vert and then move it to make sure it's merged. And this one is merged. Okay, moving on. And last is the walls. So let's go ahead and go through these. There's a bunch of empty groups on the walls. I'm just going to take all the walls in here, take them out of the empty groups. You know, you'll notice that, because um, I don't really need the groups, these groups aren't really doing anything but holding the walls. And you can tell that they're not, they're not doing anything is because they don't have any components on them. These are components of here, mesh render, wall, uh, mesh filter, and a material. Those are holding something. But if you go on the, the, the groups, they're not doing anything. So I'm just going to remove them. Um, this one has a door in it. I can put this back into our, I don't really need a door in here. So that's a frame. So yeah, don't delete anything that you actually need, but curtain, move that out. Glass, this is the one that I deactivated. So that's empty now. This is empty, 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 empty. Just making sure. Okay, delete those. Just so that's easier to manage what I'm working with. So these are all walls now. And to double check that, I'm going to exit, come back. I'm doing that with um, Shift H. Take a look. Let's go and Pro Builderize all of it. Right click with everything selected. So Mesh Filter, Pro Builderize, confirm. Same thing, hide, come here, click on the grid thing, select them face. I want to just delete these two. Delete faces, move out, next. So now we have it all ready to be merged. So let's go ahead and do that. So with all the walls selected, I'm gonna come in this group, select only the walls, right click, Pro Builder Mesh, Merge, and then go to Vert Selection, click and drag, right click, Weld Vertices, okay? And then come here, select one vertice, move it up, and make sure that it was welded properly. And sometimes you're gonna get issues like this, there's a normal issue here. If you don't fix this, you're going to get weird light bakes. So the way I found to fix this is you click on on the mesh that has this issue, go to Tools, Pro Builder, Editor, Open Smoothing Editor, and this, this top right button right here, clear the selected faces of their smoothing groups. If you click on that, it fixed that issue, that shading issue. Now I want to go do this to both the, the baseboard and the floor. Clear it. Yeah, I did have some issues over there. Floor, same thing. Clear it to do a cleaner final pass. Our mesh has been cleaned up. I'm going to turn on my light blocker group and I'm going to come here into my lighting tab, generate light. If all goes well, we should not see any seams. All right, I think they should give you a general sense of how to improve the lighting on a modular asset, especially in this case, the Unity's asset. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. 
If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching.